Hello, Catherine here. Today, we talk about the basis of reversing kidney disease, the food you need to eat and those you need to avoid. In the last few videos, we have seen stories of real patients avoiding dialysis thanks to this dietary approach. I tried to follow all your advice. I'm now pretty fit and quite healthy. I'm no more risking dialysis now. And we have also examined the science behind it. Researchers found out the single most important dietary intervention to avoid dialysis. Yes, my point here is that there is hope, even in the advanced stages, including stage 4 and 5 pre-dialysis. I've seen it personally. I've seen patients approaching dialysis fast that changed their lifestyle and changed the way they were eating. Many of them achieved what some thought was impossible, reversing CKD in the advanced stages. There is even proof in scientific literature that this can happen. But while many doctors will tell you to avoid potassium to be careful with phosphorus, there is one dietary intervention that many patients have to find about by themselves, the low protein diet. And guys, there is huge news about this diet. One of the most important debates about the low protein diet has finally been settled. I'm talking about diabetes. A very recent meta-analysis shed some light on the benefits of a low-protein diet for those with diabetes and kidney disease. More about this later on in this video. Before that, a very important question. Why some patients are still not following a low-protein diet? Today, it still looks like patients are never informed well enough by their doctors, which is a shame because, and I will be very clear on this, Nothing else is gonna work if you don't avoid protein. And guys, I know that the low protein diet today in 2022 is still a controversial topic. And I've seen doctors on YouTube recommending patients to eat a keto diet instead, what? which is crazy. And I've seen doctors even in real life arguing that without protein, the tissue in the body will be damaged. I've also seen those arguing that diabetics would fare worse with a low-protein diet. Today, I want to clarify some of these issues from a practical point of view. So, very important, if you have any doubt about what I say about the low-protein diet, ask down in comment section so we can talk about it. I always receive very interesting questions from you guys and I always do my best to answer as many as I can. And I also understand that removing protein from the diet is a huge change with many ramifications, so it is only natural that many people ask, does it really work? Can you really reverse kidney disease with a low protein diet? Well, there are two main reasons why today a diet low on protein should be recommended to those with kidney disease. The first is a review of studies on the benefits of a low protein diet. It was published in 2017 and it identified eight different benefits of the low protein diet. First, Decreased proteinuria, very important because proteinuria is the most important predictor of future decline in kidney function. Decreasing it means actually delaying dialysis. Second, decreased uremic toxins. Uremic toxins are the cause of most symptoms of kidney disease. Third, decreased oxidative stress linked to inflammation, which also cause several problems. Fourth, decreased metabolic acidosis. Fifth, decreased phosphorus, very important for bone health among other things. Sixth, decreased insulin resistance in those with diabetes. Seventh, decreased blood pressure and most important, slow down the decline of GFR. This means that basically just by limiting protein intake, dialysis can be delayed very significantly. These findings were also confirmed by an even larger review of studies published on the Cochrane Library. This is a meta-analysis firstly published in 2000 and lastly updated in 2020, conducted on 2,996 patients, mostly in stage 4 and 5 of CKD. Researchers found out, thanks to this meta-analysis, what the single most important dietary intervention to avoid dialysis is, which is not, according to them, just a low-protein diet. What they consider the single most important intervention to delay dialysis is the very low protein diet. Question, what's the difference between a low protein diet and a very low protein diet? 
Those diets are both suitable for patients with kidney disease and both can be very helpful as we have seen. In theory, we could say that a low protein diet is better in the early stages and a very low protein diet or VLPD from now on is better in the advanced stages. The main difference is the quantity of protein present in the diet. A low protein diet which also includes most vegan and vegetarian regimes usually means that the patient is going to have around 40 grams of protein per day. 40 grams mean that you can actually have a small portion of some high protein food such as meat, eggs, or fish on a daily basis. The VLP is different because it limits the patient to just around 20 grams of protein per day. That means that several foods are going to be restricted including but not just meat, eggs and fish. And again, this is an extremely effective way of protecting the kidneys and in some cases to completely reverse kidney disease. And one thing that most people don't expect to see when they stop eating protein, they usually feel immediately better. I've seen this happen in many patients and while I consider it to be surprising at first, I now believe this is to be expected. I mean, less protein also implies that there is less toxins, less waste product for the kidneys to filter. So you may actually feel better and fast when starting a low protein diet. And very important, according to literature, there is a lot of difference in terms of progression of kidney disease between a low and a very low protein diet. Low protein can help, very low protein can stop kidney disease. And while the exact amount of protein will change depending on your body weight, there are some foods that are always good for you and some that you always want to avoid. So what foods are always allowed in a VLPD? All vegetables and fruits suitable for a renal diet will fit it in a VLPD. They don't contain protein. The exception is legumes, nuts and seeds. These do contain some protein. They can be had but in very small amounts. High fat foods such as vegetable and olive oils but also olives, flax seeds, chia seeds are very recommended. Now as we can see, someone with potassium levels under control may add avocado and coconut, two very healthy fat sources to their diet. What foods should you always avoid in a VLPD? High protein foods are to be avoided completely in a VLPD. This includes any kind of meat and fish but also eggs and dairy are to be completely removed. Red meat intake in particular was strongly associated with an increased risk of kidney damage by a published paper. Nuts and seeds are a great area as we have seen because they are lower in protein and richer in healthy fats than meat and fish. Okay, a very important question that has finally an answer. What about people with diabetes? Is a low protein diet good for diabetic kidney disease? Okay, this question is a pretty hard one and it has been a source of debate and controversy for years. You see, there are only three macronutrients, three sources of calories and nourishment for the human body, protein, carbohydrate and fat, nothing more. You cannot get calories from anything else. Now, there is no doubt that limiting carb intake helps with diabetes, especially high glycemic index foods. So diabetes patients are often told to limit carb intake and to eat more fat and protein to compensate. But on the other hand, protein do cause damage to the kidneys. No doubt about that either. And I mean, even if you have diabetes and kidney disease, you still have to eat something. You cannot just starve. So what's the answer? Should someone with diabetes and kidney disease limit their protein intake? A recent review of studies conducted on 506 participants all suffering from diabetic kidney disease seems to have found an answer. What they discovered is that patients with DKD who consume less than 0.8 grams of protein per kilograms a day had a significantly reduced decline in glomerular filtration rate and a significant decrease in proteinuria. So people with diabetes were able to significantly slow down kidney disease progression when reducing protein intake. I'm putting the emphasis on significantly here because that's not a word researchers use lightly. I mean, we are talking about the difference in GFR of 22.31 points here. That could mean delaying dialysis by years. 
That's a huge difference, not just a significant one. And we are talking about a low protein diet, not a very low protein diet. So this is not an extremely restrictive diet, more like what a vegetarian or a semi-vegan would eat. And other studies are also showing that a VLPD could be even better even for those with diabetes, but as we have seen, that's a diet that comes with some serious restrictions and it can cause malnutrition, but that can be avoided. How can you avoid malnutrition problems in a VLPD? There is a supplement for that, keto analogs of amino acids. Very low protein diets are always coupled with some keto analog supplementation. The reason is malnutrition. Because while your kidneys really suffer from breaking down protein into amino acids, your body really needs amino acids. Amino acids are the building block of all the tissue inside your body. Keto analogs of amino acids are nitrogen-free analogs of essential amino acids. Nitrogen-free is the key here. Nitrogen is the part of protein that's actually putting all the burden on the kidneys and making CKD progress. So to get the benefits of a low protein diet and avoid malnutrition, you can use these special amino acids. In short, the very low protein diet works based on the notion that the kidneys are damaged by protein. Once you remove protein from the diet almost completely, the kidneys will improve. A very low protein diet is not something you can self-prescribe though. It requires very precise calculations and a special supplementation. Okay, a question now. Should someone on dialysis follow a low protein diet? No, they shouldn't. Not after they start dialysis. I got asked this question a couple of times here, so I thought I should clarify. You see, the aim of the low protein is to protect the kidneys from nitrogen waste. Nitrogen waste is created by the metabolism of protein and it damages the kidneys. When you eat less protein, there is less nitrogen waste and the kidneys won't be damaged by it. Dialysis, however, will do just that, remove all the waste and toxins that the kidneys are supposed to remove, including nitrogen waste. This is why those on dialysis are told to eat a lot more protein, to even supplement it. Protein is good for your body, it's just the kidneys that are damaged by it. And just like for malnutrition that can be solved with a specific supplement, those following a VLPD are also at risk for vitamin deficiencies. What deficiencies are most common in those following a low protein diet? Because certain nutrients are only found in animal-based foods, those following a renal diet are more at risk than the general population for vitamin deficiencies. Vitamin B12, vitamin D, magnesium, iron are some of the most common deficiencies. But don't worry, there are foods and supplements you can use to avoid deficiencies and to help your kidneys improve. If you want to know more, this video appears for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.